I, I remember my grandfather, my, uh, my grandfather, he was always drunk. And one day my grandmother, he was outside talking in his drunken state and he said, uh, oh, we've been married 60 odd years and we've never had an argument. And my grandmother called out, you're always drunk, what's the good at arguing? <laughs> <laughs> Now, marriage has to be worked on. It has to be kept alive. In other words, keep the courting going when you're married. Mm -hmm. Don't stop that courting. Amen. Dress up for each other. Don't just, you know, when you when you when you're caught when you when you're first going out of each other, you you, you come you, you you know your boyfriend or your girlfriend's coming round. You dress on. You put on your you put on your aftershave and all that kind of thing and then always look good for each other and then all of a sudden now you've been married about six months you come home and what do you find you're in, in curlers face pat on <laughs> no dress up for each other look good for each other keep it going find some good things to say about your I don't mean make things up, but find some good things to say. You cook a good meal, say, yeah, thank you, darling, that was a good meal. I really enjoyed that. Find good things. Instead of looking for things to criticise, look for things to praise. If you want to look for things to criticise, look at yourself. Mm -hmm. And then put them right. Because if you find the things to criticise in yourself, you won't, your wife won't need to tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> and your husband won't need to tell you about it. But someone said, "Well, marriage is a made in heaven." No, they're not. Hmm. No one ever went to no one ever went to heaven to get married. Hmm. I got married on earth. I got married in a church. And yes, marriage can be successful if God is the head, and we practice principles. But it's, you've got to want it to work. You've got to want it to work. And. Uh, You've got to evaluate things. Look at the things that you argue about, mostly. Look at the things that you fall apart, mostly. Can they be changed? Can you change them? Well, why not just leave them? They can't be changed. Why not just leave them? Why make a big thing about every single issue? Is it because you're being possessed by that? I don't mean demon. I don't mean demon possessed, but that possessed by that one thing. But he just, he just won't do that. I've told him a dozen times and he just won't do it. He still leaves that thing there. And you carry on like that, it's going to ruin your marriage. And uh, as I say, in marriage I'm still learning. I've been married 31 years and I'm still learning. And my wife and I have adjusted to each other very well. And we know each other's ways. And we've learnt, we know what we know what we still have a, we still have a, we're still learning and we're still practicing we're still growing. Believe me, a good marriage doesn't end the moment you say I do and you kiss the bride. It's a lifetime commitment. It's a lifetime commitment. If you want if you want your garden to look good, you don't just make it look good one day. You go outside, you keep it, you keep working on it, you keep weeding it, you keep going on it. And, well, okay. I hope those, I hope those few words help you. Thank you for listening to Evangelist David McKivitt. If you need prayer or would like to receive a free copy of our magazine called The Great Commission, write to Full Gospel Evangelism, PO Box 24528, London, E17 3FG. That is Full Gospel Evangelism, PO Box 24528, London, E17 3FG. Eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth, the life, the door. If you believe in Him, you shall be saved.
gift, God's God's free gift to you is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord.